Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, webinar series number four in our mobile mapping webinars. Um, my name is Bishoy Gerges, and I'm today here with my colleague, Carl Chow, and uh, we are presenting to you um, episode number four regarding post processing. Um, it would be great if everybody can hear me well. I uh, would send something like, hey, we hear you, or we don't see a screen, or if you have any problems. Uh, Please send us in the chat. Okay. So, um, thank you again. Um, so in this uh, webinar series, I uh, would just like uh, to do a recap on the uh, previous uh, episodes that we have been through. So um, in the beginning, we did a general introduction on this series. And um, after that, we had a uh, follow up on the factors influencing the accuracy of your mobile mapping data. Uh, we learned about the best practice and we learned about the different uh, factors that could affect your data. Um, and then uh, our final and last series uh, was about the point cloud registration CDC that was presented by my colleague Miguel. And um, in this episode, we will present to you how to get the best out of your postback. Um, to get the best out of your postback, we decided that we will split this into two parts. So in this first part that we're discussing today, um, we'll be focused more on the different processing modes. Um, and uh, in the second part, so we will be mostly focusing on uh, showing you how everything is done in postback and in addition, other factors. Um, so I think I will handle now the uh, presentation to my uh, colleague, Carl. And uh, I would like to uh, um, remind you all that uh, this is mainly we're focused on the land mobile mapping products. And uh, we will not be discussing other um, other types of data that come from marine or aerial products. So, um, thank you again. And uh, Carl, please uh, go ahead with the agenda. Okay, thank you, Bishoy. So, uh, the agenda for today. Uh, first of all, we need to know why should we use Postpack. Uh, after that, I will introduce the general workflow of data post processing. Uh, how to choose the best processing mode for your data set depending on the situation. And then we will uh, compare the results of different processing modes based on our own test. Uh, after summarizing, we will have some time to try to answer your questions. So uh, please, if you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to send it to us by using the chat tool and we will uh, correct them and answer them together at the end. Yeah. So what is Postpack? What, why should we use Postpack? Uh, Postpack means the position and orientation system post-processing package, mobile mapping suite. And this is the post-processing software package for airborne land land and marine applications. Uh, the advantage of uh, post-processing over the real-time solution is uh, there are no broken data link from reference station or VRS. And we, with the post-processing, we can process the data in forward and both and backward as well to calculate the sensors. Uh, with infusion technology, Postpack will help to improve the accuracy and uh, robustness of the trajectory. If you don't have Postpack, you can only use the raw post data, which means you cannot expect the accuracy and the uh, quality of the time will be pretty bad without GNSS corrections. Um, what is infusion? So infusion technology uh, is using uh, 
uh, used in Postpact to adjust the limitations of traditional high accuracy differential GNSS processing. So with the traditional uh, solution, we need to close to the to a reference station, and we need to maintain the GNSS signal checking. Uh, with Infusion, there are two main improvements from the traditional methods, the tightly coupled processing and the IAKR, which we will explain right after. Uh, from these two graphics, we can uh, see the difference of the standard loose coupled aided inertia navigation and the infusion tightly coupled processing. Uh, for standard loose, loosely coupled aided inertia navigation, the GNS receiver computers the, its solution independently from the current filter. But for infusion tightly coupled processing, the observables are processed by the common filter. Uh, the key difference here is that the common filter processes the row, shooter range, and carry phase observables directly from the GNSS receiver, thus bypassing the receiver's navigation filter. Uh, this means the system will be able to benefit from GNSS observables even there are less than four satellites. This is quite useful, especially for land mobile applications when the GNSS signal is often obstructed. Uh, with this simplified uh, schematic, we can compare the traditional uh, KAR and the infusion IAKR. Additionally, we use kinematic ambiguity resolution. Um, the GNSS needs to compute its own position before it can help, in, help the INS, and it requires at least four satellites, and some time to resolve the carrier phase ambiguities before it can compute the, a solution. Here we will face an, a problem where GNSS signal is obstructed. Uh, with infusion technology, not only the GNSS helps the INS, but also the INS position is used to help the GNSS to remember its position, even when checking three satellites or less. Uh, this allows much quicker ambiguity resolution after a complete outage or arose keeping carrier space ambiguities fixed, even if there are less than four satellites. Uh, in general, the data pro processing workflow is straightforward, but there are some choices that we can use to make your project better or worse. Uh, the workflow is quite simple. You need to import the row type file, choose the proper row antenna modes depending on the system you are using, set the level arm standard deviation, and then import the base station files if they are any available. In GNS inertial processor, you need to choose the proper processing mode, then decide should we use EMI and games, and select the proper initialization options. After that, we can generate the aspect file. At the end, we should view and control the quality by using display plots in Postpack. Uh, during this presentation, we will focus on how to choose the best processing mode depending on the situation. The other topics such as games, EMI, and other options will be part of the next webinar. Now I will try to introduce the different processing modes and how to choose the best processing modes for your data set. 
As you can see, uh, there are many different processing modes in Postpack. We have Infusion Smart Base, Infusion Single Base or Multi Single Base, Infusion PVP, and Infusion Autonomous. Here, we don't discuss about PV PPRTX because it's currently not part of the Trimble imaging portfolio. Also, we won't discuss about the GNS snake because it's a loosely coupled processing mode and it's not recommended for land mobile applications. So I will start from the first one, uh, the infusion single base. What is infusion, uh, what is single base? So it uses a single base to correct the GNS Shooter ranges. Uh, you can use GPS, Kronos, Beidou, Galileo, and QZS satellites as well. Uh, from the graphic, we can see the base station location is known accurately, and then it receives the GNS signals, calculates the shooter ranges to the satellite, and determine the range error. After that, the base station we uh, transmit the range corrections to the rover either in real time or for post processing. Uh, for example, in post pack. So, and uh, the rover station can receive the GIS signals, calculate the uh, shooter ranges, and then we apply the range corrections to determine the posi right position. Uh, when should we use the single base? So in case the whole mission is within 20 kilometer of a single base, uh, this is optimal. Uh, or the whole mission is within 70 kilometer of, uh, of the base and it's not possible to use smart base. Uh, if the baseline is more than, for example, more than 70 kilometers, so you should try to maybe the PVP and compare the results. How to use uh, single base? Mm, to use single, single base, you have two options. Option one, you can use your own base station data. Uh, to do this, you need to import the Linux or Trimble file, double check the coordinates in the coordinate manager, or compute RTX coordinate, coordinates, which we will introduce in the next slide. And then we can set it as base station. So, as we said, so if you are unsure of the base station coordinates or reference frame, you can use this uh, computer RTX coordinates. The second option to use single base is uh, to use the find base station tool in Postpack. Uh, open the find base station tool, select single base, and then the system will search uh, the base station within the search radius. Uh, using this option, you don't have to check the coordinates and the reference frame. Uh, not net, you can also add your own GIS server base database. What can we expect, expect uh, from the single base processing mode? Uh, positional accuracy depends on the baseline. Um, for short baseline, we within 30 kilometers, it's about two to five centimeters. And for long baseline, within 100 kilometers, the accuracy is uh, less than 10 centimeters. Note that, so for short baseline, you should start the mission within 30 kilometers and don't go further than 30 kilometers from the base. And for the long baseline, you should start 
and stop your mission within 30 kilometers and don't go further than 100 kilometers from the base. Uh, this means you should try to start and stop your mission close to the base station. Uh, the error increases by about one millimeter per kilometer of the baseline. As we said, so try to start and stop the mission near to the base, and this will help to improve the data quality. Similar to the single base, we have another processing mode called multi single base. So uh, it uses various single bases to correct the GNS um, shooter ranges. Which part of the trajectory is corrected by the nearest base? In other words, the nearest base is not always the same. It will be changed along the trajectory. Same as a uh, single base, we can use G GPS, GLONASS, Beidou, and UCSS satellites. When should we use the multi-single base? So in case there are more than one nearest base along the trajectory and uh, your uh, mission is always within 20 kilometers of the nearest base, this is, this is optimal for our mission. Or in our case, the base data doesn't meet uh, smart base requirement. So in this case, we can use the multi single base. Uh, this is typical for uh, long linear projects such as the uh, long highways, uh, power line corridors, uh, especially if the conditions are not good for smart base. So we can use the multi single base. How to use multi single base? So we need to uh, select uh, multi, multiple base stations to create the multi single base station. The system will automatically uh, verify if the selected base stations will allow processing and then excluded, exclude rows uh, which are not within the processing criteria. So for example, if a base is never the nearest base for your trajectory for, all, for the whole mission, it will be excluded. Uh, once it is fin it finished, a new entity will appear in the Project Explorer uh, and called uh, MTSBX, so multi-single multi base X. The positional accuracy is depends on the baseline as well, same as the single base processing mode. So for a short baseline uh, within 30 kilometers, it's about two to 10 centimeters. And for a long baseline uh, within 100 kilometers, it's, about, it's less than 10 centimeters. Um, so, same as single base processing mode, for short baseline, you should start within 30 kilometers and don't go further than 30 kilometers from the base. And for the long baseline, you should start and stop your mission within 30 kilometers and don't go further than 100 kilometers from the base, which means you should start and stop the mission close to any one of your stations. Again, the, the error uh, increases by one millimeter per kilometer of the baseline. So Infusion Smart Base, uh, what is Smart Base? It uses a network of base stations to correct the GNSS shooter ranges. It looks like a virtual reference station concept, and, but optimized for mobile mapping applications. 
GNSS observables for each epoch of the mission will be calculated as, a, as if a reference station exists at the lowest location throughout the whole mission. We can use GPS and GLONASS satellites for this processing mode. When should we use smart base? So in case our mission is uh, within a network of at least four base stations and some parts of your mission are at more than 20 kilometers from your nearest base, as we can see from this graphic. So in this case, we can use the smart base processing mode. How to use smart base? First of all, we need to download the base stations and then run smart base quality check to see uh, if, they are, if the base stations are acceptable to be used to build up the network. This is optimal, uh, this is uh, op op optional. After that, we can run the Planix smart base to process. To download the base station data, you can use the find base station tool in Prospect. Select to use smart base in the lower left corner and change the search radius if needed. The system will automatically to check the data availability to download them. After post processing, a network uh, surrounding the trajectory will be created. Ideally, uh, the trajectory should be completely, completely, completely inside the polygon. In addition to download the base station in Prospect, so you can also try to use your own base stations to, uh, for example, to fill the gaps or to densify the network, or even you can create the whole network from scratch. Uh, this will need some specific requirements. So if the position error of the base station is known uh, as less than five centimeters, you will need the base station data, which cover two hours before your mission and then at least five minutes after your mission. If the position error of the base stations is unknown, so you will need at least 18 hours of continuous observation, free of data gaps and cycle slips for the smart base quality check. Uh, this is average out any multi-pass variations due to the changes in satellite positions. As we talked, so we can select a smart base quality check to perform a network adjustment uh, base station coordinates. Uh, this is optional. In case, the error is bigger than five centimeters. Uh, the base station will be indicated as bad position and its coordinate will be adjusted. If less than 18 hours of continuous observations, free of data gaps and cycle slips, the base station will be indicated as bad estimate and it will be disabled. After running uh, smart base, so GNSS QC statistics will be displayed, and then a smart base region will be indicated in the plane view. What can we expect from the smart base processing mode? Uh, for base short baseline within 70 kilometers, so the positional accuracy 
is about two to ten centimeter, and for long baseline within one hundred kilometers is about ten to fifteen centimeters. Uh, the entire mission should be within the smart network, and for short baseline, the rover should not extend further than 70 kilometers from the nearest base and should remain within the smart base network throughout the whole mission. And for long base baseline, the rover should not extend further than 100 kilometers from the nearest base and spend at least a few minutes within 70 meters from a base. Infusion PPP. So PPP means precise point pre, uh, positioning. It uses a network of GNS reference stations uh, distributed worldwide to provide precise satellite orbit and clock uh, corrections. Uh, this is worldwide and no need for reference stations, but requires a long initialization time for about 30 minutes of gap free. So in it should be in good GIS conditions. Uh, PDP is limited to GPS satellites only. When to, <clears throat> to use PPP? Only when there is no reference station available within 70 kilometers of your mission and it is not possible to use smart base. So PPP only effective where the GNSS coverage is uninterrupted. So this means we always we always recommend to rely on base stations, but if for any reasons um, the base station data is unavailable for after mission, then you can switch to PVP. But so you should aware of the limitations of PVP. So it will takes it will take about 30 minutes of uninterrupted GNSS signal before it can coverage to its optimal precision. How to use PVP? So simply import raw raw data and in the GNS inertia processor, select uh, infusion PVP to run the processing. Uh, you need to accept the PVP download and select the express, express mode. The expected uh, positional accuracy for PVP is about 10 to 50 centimeters, and again, so make a long stati uh, static initialization for about 30 minutes in area with good GNSS conditions. Next one is the uh, autonomous. Um, autonomous relies solely in on the navigation devices and the is when should we use autonomous? Only when none of the previous uh, processing mode work. So um, autonomous, autonomous is not recommended to be used. We always we normally use it for uh, support purpose to troubleshoot issue. To use infusion autonomous, import the raw lower files and in and select infusion autonomous in the GNSS inertia processor. You can run the processing. The positional accuracy for CA is about a few meters, and for DGPS is about few centimeters to few decimeters depending on the correction resources. Um, the trajectory is not smoothed and it will be bumpy depends on the situation. 
of your mission. Uh, so this is all the processing mode we will introduce and after introducing all the different processing mode I will uh, compare the result from different processing modes that we tested based on the data set uh, we got from our customer ESP. The goal for this um, comparison is to calculate and compare the relative accuracy of different processing modes. The method we use is to measure the relative distance between uh, multiple targets, which we can see from the multiple passes. Uh, we are not using GPS here, as we don't want to be influenced by any error from the GPS. So we only compare the re relative accuracy. Uh, in this test, both the games and the DMI are disabled. And we compare the measured precision against the predicted pre uh, precision from PostPack user guide and with uh, against the calculated precision from the expert uh, IMS. Uh, here is the, the whole trajectory and the location of our target. This picture, maybe you can clearly see the location of the target. So they located on the row side around our trajectory. Uh, this is an uh, example of our target. It's a reflective rectangle on the pavement. Uh, the measuring method we use is we we locate the center of each target hit, and then we measure the distance between each hit and the average hit, and, and the average hit location for this target. So we calculate the, start, the standard deviation, which gives us the uh, estimation of the relative accuracy. Again, the relative position is not measured between the hits and the GCPS, but between the hits and the average of the hits position for each target. Um, we repeat this pr process for each processing mode. As we said, so we, we compared the measured standard deviation with uh, calculated error RMS. To get the error RMS, we can go to the display plot. Under view statistics, we can get the calculated error RMS. So now we can show our result of the comparison. From these graphics, we can see the RMS, uh, the error RMS of the single base processing mode with short baseline. So you can see the baseline is about five kilometers. It's very close to our mission area. So for the most areas, the north and east position error is within one centimeter and the down position error is about two centimeters. Uh, we can compare the measured standard deviation with the expected air accuracy from the post-pack user guide and the calculated error RMS values. So the expected accuracy for single base with short baseline is about two to five centimeters and the calculated error RMS for north and east is about uh, one centimeter, and for down position is 1.4 centimeters. Um, based on our test, the measured standard deviation for X and Y is a few millimeters, 
and for Z is about 1.5 centimeter. The general standard deviation is about 1.8 centimeter and maximum 3.5 uh, centimeters. So you can see from the graphics, so on the right side, the all the target hits the all the target hits are overlapped uh, very well. So for single base processing mode with long baseline, um, the, for, for most areas, the north and east position error is within 1.5 centimeter, and the down position error is about is within 2.5 centimeters. Um, the expected accuracy for single base with long baseline is less than 10 centimeter, and the calculated RMS of north and east position is 1.3 centimeters, and for down position is 1.8 centimeters. So we can see almost the same we got from our major standard deviation. So for X and Y is about one centimeter and Z 1.7 centimeter. Uh, generally, the standard deviation of is uh, 2.3 centimeters and maximum 4.6 centimeters. Uh, for smart base with short baseline, uh, for most areas, the north and east position error RMS is within 1.5 centimeters, and the down position error RMS is about two centimeters. Here we can see the difference, and the expected uh, accuracy is two to ten centimeter, and uh, the calculated error RMS is almost the same as our uh, measured standard deviation. So for uh, for X and Y, it's about within ten, uh, one centimeter. And for Z, this deduction is about uh, 1.4 centimeters. And generally, the standard deviation is about 1.7 centimeters. So we can see from the uh, graphic right side, so all the target keys looks quite good and overlapped quite well. For long baseline smart base, so uh, the north and east position error RMS is within two centimeters, and the down position is about 2 to 2.5 centimeters. With the expected 10 to 15 centimeters accuracy, we, after the calculated error RMS and the measured standard deviation, we got about uh, one centimeter in XY deduction and 1.6 in Z deduction. And the general, general standard deviation, 2.1 centimeters. Uh, we can see all the target hits are overlapped a bit less than the others, but it's very good. Uh, for PPP, the north and east position error is within 25 centimeters and down position Arrow RMS about 35 centimeters. Um, with the expected LC accuracy of 10 to 50 centimeter, um, so we get a we get a bit different uh, compared to the calculate error RMS and the measured uh, standard deviation. So uh, for the error. RMS, the north and east is about within 20 centimeters, but the standard deviation for X deduction 
is about 20, uh, 40 centimeters. Uh, and the general, general standard deviation is uh, 45 centimeter and maximum more than 90 centimeters. We can see from the right side, uh, all the target hits are not well overlapped. For autonomous, the position error RMS is a few meters, and same we expect the accuracy is a few meters. Based on our measured standard deviation, looks quite better than the calculated error RMS, but um, it still reaches 80, uh, 60 centimeters in general. Uh, we also test the real-time solution. So as you can see, uh, the error RMS looks uh, unstable and reaches, reaches a few meters. The measured standard deviation is about uh, 2.4 meters. We can see from the trajectory on the right side, uh, so uh, these are keys from the same target. So the pink lines are the real-time trajectory and the green lines are the calculated trajectory in prospect. We can see that the relative position, uh, the relative precision of real-time solution is very low. Also, we can see here from this graphic, so for the same target, they are totally way off. Uh, here is an overview of all these uh, processing modes. Uh, in general, uh, most of the processing modes are within our expectations. So expect, expect the PPP. So you can see the PPP is a bit uh, out of the expected accuracy. This may be because of the GNSS um, is uh, obstructed. Uh, some of the processing modes are even better than expected. So for, for example, the smart base and the single and the single base uh, short baseline and autonomous as well. So especially the smart base, you can see the accuracy is quite good and, and uh, uh, this is might because of the uh, good uh, network polygon of our network. Oh, so today we learned about to how to use PostPack to uh, improve the accuracy of the data. We learned that infusion technology is useful for land mobile systems. We need to choose the proper processing mode based on the uh, base station avail availability and the shape of the trajectory as well. Uh, infusion tightly coupled processing mode are recommended for our land mobile systems. So based on this uh, single base a single base or multi-single base and the smart base are recommended uh, than the PVP and uh, autonomous. Uh, even we don't have prospect, we can still use the real-time raw data, but we cannot expect the accuracy. Um, it will be unstable, depends on the environment. Uh, here, is some, here are some uh, difference you can use. 
So the first one is the host pack GNS uh, inertia tools user manual. So generally you can find everything for post pack post processing in this manual. And uh, you can also see the post LV installation and operation guides. And the third one is an article about the infusion technology. You can have a look on it. Um, next time, <clears throat> we will introduce the second part of uh, getting the best out of post pack. Uh, it will involve the games, DMI, initialization options, and put our hands on the software. Uh, this is scheduled for October 15th. So now is the time for questions. Uh, if you still have new questions, you can send it to us by using the chat tool. Or if you have any questions after the webinar, please feel free to contact us by send an email to imaginespot at chimbo.com. Thank you. Sorry. All right. Thank you, uh, Carl, for the presentation. And uh, we will be taking uh, your questions now. So um, I have a couple of questions that I have received during the presentation. And uh, please feel free to send anything uh, via the chat or the question. All right. So uh, we have a question here asking uh, how many base stations I need for smart base method. Um, so for the smart base, you will need at least four base stations, and it can handle up to 50. Um, we have another question asking, um, after processing, I need to export latitude, longitude, height with GPS seconds and weeks. Um, I cannot export to GPS seconds. So, um, this is a bit out of the scope of the presentation, but um, we will be discussing uh, similar tools in the next webinar, but um, for the sake of answering this question, you can simply use something called the profile manager. Um, and in the profile manager, you could basically um, design your own format uh, that you would like to export. And uh, from that format, you could choose what time format you would like to have with your entry. And in the time format, there are so many time formats, and I've just checked at the moment, and I could see everything that you're asking for. So please look for the profile manager, and if you own Postback already, you could look in the, in the manual. All right. Um, a question saying, um, am I right if I process with GAMS and DMI, the solution will be the best solution to process the data? Um, so we will not go through processing with GAMS and DMI now, as uh, we explained. Um, so this is um, this, this webinar is only about um, choosing the best processing modes from the diff different infusion, single base, multi single, or smart. Um, in the next webinar, we will be going into details on using GAMS and DMI. Also, we've explained um, in a previous episode of the series, um, how can the GAMS and DMI both influence and affect your data? So um, both together could give you an idea on when to use or when not to use GAMS or DMI. Okay. Mm. So another question asking, can we export the TRJ file from Postback? Hmm. I'm not actually sure about uh, what is a TRJ file format, um, but as I mentioned before, Postback offers lots of <clears throat> possibilities to export your data, um, either in the SBIT.out binary format, or you could export the SKML. You can also use this profile manager to export in your own customized format. OK. 
Okay, we have a question now. Is it available to use different date terms in GeoEats? Um, I'm not sure what you mean exactly using different date terms in GeoEats, if you mean by exporting your data um, or setting a different date term GeoEats for your base station. So maybe you could just uh, write me again on this one. Certain data for base station in the in the profile manager. Um, uh, sorry, in the uh, coordinate manager of your base, as explained by Carl, you could set your base uh, coordinates properly, and you could use the reference frame of your base. Um, the question here coming from: What possibly did you use for the test? So uh, for the that test, we used AP40. All right, so we still have nine more minutes, so feel free to ask anything you would like. Question coming here, or two more. Okay. Um, is it right single base is better than multi single base? Um, well, the whole point of this presentation is that we show you the different processing modes so you could choose based on your uh, data shape, based on your area. We cannot tell you now what is better. There is no better or worse, there's just a better for different scenarios. So, um, I cannot tell you, this is, uh, the, the whole point here is that we want you to choose the best based on your, um, on your on your trajectory. So we cannot say what is best or or or, or not. Um, a question, any idea where SmartPays download is available? So um, there is a service that um, that Aplanix is connected to. So your postback is connected to the default service that downloads available base stations. And this is just simply the button that is called Find Base Station and Postback. So if you would click the button as was shown in the presentation, you'll get a list of all the available smart bases that you could, uh, sorry, base stations that you could download. Um, you could also, of course, add your own base station as was explained before. And you can also add your own um, base station database, so Postback could look into that and download base stations. So it means I mean geographically available in default. Um, so it checks the publicly available data based on the services that are Aplanix the postback is looking for. So uh, there is no like what is default or not default, but it checks what is available around your area. And in some areas, the available base stations or publicly available in the post or the postback service is um, is a lot. So you must find like uh, 20, 30 base stations near your trajectory by the by default included in the find base option, or um, you might find none. 
And in that case, you might need to go and choose a different processing mode. All right. So I think okay. um, one more question. If I have subscription to Trimble VRS now, can I set up smart base to connect directly to the available VRS now base stations? Uh, this is a good question. I'm not sure if this could be done because the VRS now is with base and it's not. Um, um, for for Atlantic to conduct a service or to the database of uh, base stations, um, it does not use actually a what's that needs to be an FTP as I see from the manual. So um, I am not a hundred percent sure if you can do it. So I think I will take this question and then I will try to send you an answer later. So I have your name and email here and I will send you an answer. What is the last post version that can use smart base? Um, not sure what the last mean, but the last available uh, post pack is um, we have 8.4 with the service pack, and smart base has been working basically since since I've seen post pack. So I don't know for maybe uh, three years now. I don't know what what was the oldest one. Uh, could you also send me uh, information about connecting to VRS now? So VRS, yeah, sure, of course. Um, all right. Okay, so I think we are through our presentation and uh, I think it's time now. So thank you everyone for attending this and uh, we hope you enjoyed it. We hope it was informative to you. So as usual, you'll get an email after the presentation. Usually you'll get this email tomorrow with the recording. Um, so you could review the recording and uh, if you have any questions, uh, please do not hesitate to contact us on imaging support. Um, Thank you again and wish you a good rest of the day or evening depending on when you are and hope to see you in the next webinar.